Many groups, whether religious or political, will try and show their better side. Whether it's a left-wing political group, or whether it's a very moderate, centre-right Christian group. However, when it comes down to more dangerous and more cultic organisations, they're not just simply showing their best side, or trying to make out that they are nearer the truth. They're trying to say that they are perfection, or leading towards perfection. They propagandise their works, they give out leaflets, and they have artwork, which reflects this idea of their perfection, of them being the truth, being the true way. That can manifest as a form of religion, or a form of political religion. It's basically control through ideas of truth, ideas of actuality. If you're convinced something is true, you're more likely to follow, and if they show their system and their ideas to be supposedly the truth through persuasive motives, then they can draw you in and make you begin to at least become interested towards their belief. Typically, with cults, you have charismatic leadership. Whether we talk about one leader or a group of leaders, a single educator or an inner circle. If you have an inner circle, you usually have one prime member of that group. So when you have one leader, you very often have many supporting elements, which ensure that that leader is always correct. The charisma they may project out to the people of the group may be something which is quite endearing, quite loving, placid, extremely pacifistic, may appear to be something wonderful. They could be very passionate, perhaps, very outspoken. And they could also make claims about their spirituality, about who they are, about their abilities, claiming to have certain mystical powers, perhaps, or in the cases of some, claiming to be a direct incarnation of some divinity. They use these ideas and the ideas of the group to ensure you believe in them, that you draw your attention towards them and their words. The people around you who have been in the group for longer will support the idea that that leader is a greater mind than you, a person who knows better, a wise person or a holy person. But that does not make it so. People assume, when they're in groups like certain types of cultic religion or politics, that because people around them are basically saying this person is intelligent and wise and you should listen to what they say, that you should do the same. If you allow yourself to go to a particular church, a particular group meeting, then you can become indoctrinated simply by being, well, part of the group mentality. Having the same mentality as the group and allowing yourself to conform to what others do can allow you to become, at least in part, thought reformed. Thought reform can come in many forms. From the first moment you come into a group, a belief, and you invest your time and effort into it, you allow yourself to accept the arguments, even if you don't research the arguments, you're convinced by the certain ideas which are brought forward, you get drawn in, you go to a few groups, whether it's in a church or a political group or whatever. You allow yourself to become part of the group mentality. You allow yourself to put your faith in those who teach, those who pass on the ideas of the leader or the leaders, or the great teaching, the supposed truth. The thought reform is already taking place, and as you continue, perhaps, courses, perhaps some kind of Bible study classes or other forms of study classes come into play, prayer classes, meditation groups, 
discussion groups, which are all about supporting the idea. You pray upon certain ideas, you meditate upon certain ideas, you think and talk with people of like mind within the belief system. Not an outside group, a mixture of those who believe and those who do not, but a simple group of people who all believe roughly in the same thing, who make themselves conform to an idea. The group mentality is very powerful and it can make you conform to ideas of a particular belief, whether that is religious, political or whatever. It reforms your state of mind because you're closed off, you're within the system. Very often when people become part of a particular belief, they allow themselves to become slowly but surely converted. They dedicate a great deal of time to their new truth, their belief, the actuality which they believe they found, the truth which they believe they have contact with. As a result, the process of thought reform can be quite rapid, with the group itself being very enthusiastic, with love bombing, where people try and show some love and attention to you, and when you don't get the love and attention elsewhere, well, you're drawn back towards the group. It's a very powerful process. As a result, some people can be drawn into, converted and become part of a particular cult extremely quickly. It can take a week, perhaps even less, for people who are perhaps isolated, they've lost a family member, who've cut themselves off from their friends, they go to a particular church or political group, they allow themselves to become indoctrinated and then they make that particular view their life. They've allowed themselves to become, well, to use the old-fashioned term, brainwashed. A great many groups rely upon donations and money-making schemes. With a standard group whether religious or political, a small donation, whether a fixed donation or a donation of choice, is all they need. Enough to pay for a room in a community hall, enough to keep the power on in a particular church building, or whatever. For a cult organisation, a group which is perhaps a bit more organised, a bit more focused, it's about making money. It's about getting money off you. So although a room in a particular building, in a community hall or a community centre, may only cost X amount of money, they want X plus Y to cover their time. Making their political or religious views a business. This can basically be their way of making money. Rather than simply having the idea of enough to upkeep what they do, enough to continue what they do, it's very often about extortion. You'll end up with courses and qualifications for those courses being extremely costly. You'll end up with books being sold and other little mementos which are overpriced for what they are. And you must have all of these materials if you're to progress. If you wish to progress as a person, you have to go through this process or that process or some such nonsense. To be a happier person, you have to come to our special meditation classes. Well, if you want to understand the truth, you've got to come to our special Bible study groups and so on and so forth. The ideas vary, but the techniques of thought reform are relatively uniform. There are variations naturally, depending upon the belief, whether it's a form of Christian belief, a form of Eastern belief, something which is quite New Age perhaps, or if it's a political, non-religious view. But in any case, thought reform like this coupled with a price tag, 
is obvious control. You've come into the group. You've been convinced that it's got something to it, that it's kind of true at least. You get drawn into the group mentality, you follow the leadership and the teachings, and then it's all about the money. You're drawn in, you're thought reformed, and now the price tag. And that continues. A great many beliefs and organisations with quack courses are basically about continuing the work and if you fail at that course you have to come back again oh we're doing another one next month or next year maybe you need to go over the research again and so on and so forth it's simply about money in that case a great many cults are about scamming people you've got to learn to do the course You've got to learn to do this. If you don't learn this, then you're probably not going to progress. And we're the only ones who do this particular practice, this particular form of meditation, prayer. We're the only ones who teach about this particular message within this particular holy book or this particular political view. It's still about control. But now the control costs money. A great many cult-like groups become isolationist. Despite their preaching and spreading the word of their truth, the ideas of their truth through whichever means or medium, they are basically about not interacting with ideas which may go against their particular ideological view. As a result, rather than actually looking into the details of certain errors in their belief, or where they might be wrong, where other beliefs might be somehow better, they all simply cut that off. That includes cutting out friends and family, or indeed anyone or anything which may be detrimental to their belief system. Because if anything gets between them and their belief, in their view, it can be damaging to their spirituality. So naturally, they don't want to be affected by that. They don't want to end up with repercussions because of actually thinking. Or at least thinking beyond their belief system. Because they've been indoctrinated... They've come into a belief, they've been converted, they've become part of this cult group mentality, they follow the teachings and indeed now the orders of the group leaders. They give their money and their time to the belief. It must be true because they spent so much money on it, so much time, they've had so many experiences, and so on and so forth, that it must be true. And people outside who think differently are either closed-minded, negative, perhaps even evil, corrupted, or simply sheeple. They're cattle of everyday society. Whichever way it's justified, the group mentality is sustained, kept intact by the fact that people prevent themselves from thinking outside the box. Very often this idea of not dealing with negative influences or contradictory ideas is preached from the top. The leaders or leader will teach that if you're around negative influences, influences that do not fit with your belief, which is really their belief, their philosophical, religious, cultic mentality, then you should cut them off. That can be close friends. That can be relatives. That can be anyone you know who does not wish to be converted by your new world view. Although it is not necessary, it's very often a common characteristic with cult groups, specifically 
religious cult groups they'll try and say certain ideas relating to an apocalypse an end times or something similar we see similar beliefs with conspiracy theory cults and certain political ideological systems which are very cultic the idea of global war global holocaust new world order mass exterminations or some other horror these sorts of apocalyptic ideas although not necessary for a cult belief for a cultic mentality and belief system it is quite common because once you've got people hooked to the idea that you have the truth that the group is right that the leaders are right because the group believe in it they become part of the group they become thought reformed otherwise known as brainwashed they give their money and their time to courses to practices and to all sorts of activity they carry out meditations prayers regularly perhaps even daily or multiple times on the same day and they continue to isolate themselves, cut themselves off from family and friends, and they get told that they're the chosen, that their truth is the absolute, leading towards a perfection. And through their good faith and practice, they will be saved in this world or the next. <laughs> 